Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that that brief uh, music musical interlude. Uh, welcome back to part two, part two of my conversation with uh, certified broadcast meteorologist Meredith Garfalo. I do apologize. The power went out, and it took a few minutes for us to just get it back up and and redo the whole setup. So I think if I wasn't a techie guy, I'd probably be freaking out. But uh, uh, luckily, uh, we're back and running. And um, if you have uh, uh, some uh, comments or questions you'd like to to um, get to me or, or Meredith, just post them in the comment section below. Um, you know, keep it nice, keep it civil, and let's just have fun. So let me bring Meredith back in. Meredith, hi, how are you again? <laughs> Good. Goodness gracious. I was going to say, do you guys have some Santa Ana winds or something? I know. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't, I don't know why the power went out. I, I talked to Claire and we we, uh, we were trying to see if it was just us or or if it uh, if it impacted, uh, um, you know, other other neighbors. But um, before uh, I mean, luckily, before we um, call the, you know, L.A.D.W.P., um, the part came back on, so I'm so glad. But at the same time, it came back on, and all of a sudden, like certain things weren't turned on. Like I, you know, I have a, a little like switcher panel, so I can switch between different cam shots, and and that wasn't turning on, even though the computer was on. My camera here wasn't turning on. Uh, the internet still was out, uh, so I, I just had to reboot a bunch of stuff in addition to, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, bringing the, the, the bringing the setup in again. So <laughs> I, I do apologize. Well, I'm so glad we're back. And you know yeah. what? I think uh -huh. maybe Mother Nature was trying to to, to do a sign like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, awesome. I'm going to make a joke, but clearly I'm not a jokester. <laughs> well, and uh, just for the sake of this uh, part two, uh, we'll just do a, a quick little recap of, of what we talked about in part one, which, uh, you know, I was recording a clean feed and unfortunately the file became corrupt. But if people want to watch this, um, uh, first part before the power went out you can do so on my facebook page and i'll i'll try and get it up on youtube as well so people can watch the replay on that but um we, we started out really by talking about um your singing career but we'll start we'll start way back uh, we talked a little bit about about bullying and and how that in, uh, really motivated you to to gain the confidence that you have now and, and made you the person you are today. So maybe you can talk a little bit about about that that experience early on in, in your life and how important it was to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know, yeah, Oscar, it's something that, you know, I don't think I can I can be an advocate for enough because I went through it mm -hmm. firsthand. I, I had friends that went through it. And even as an adult, I mean, we see it every day. I'm sure you see it in certain places like, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's the office, whether it's your neighborhood, whether it's the grocery store, even because somebody's having a bad day. I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that still feel like it's okay to be a bully, even if they don't realize they're doing it. And for me as a child, I mean, when you're growing up and you're being bullied and then you're also going through verbal and emotional abuse, I mean, it's very tough as a child because those are the moments where you're really trying to grow into the person you're going to be. And when you have those moments as a child and you, you feel like you're not good enough or you're being screamed at all the time or you're having people make fun of you or make you as a, as a joke, it's just, it's disheartening and it really strips your confidence from you. And you have a couple of options. You can either give up and just choose to not have a good life and to also get into a cycle and become a bully yourself, or you can, look at everything around you and know that this isn't the end, that it's going to get better and go to the people like your teachers and your friends and the family members that support you and remind yourself every day that, you know, confidence does, does come and build over the years. But, you know, it's also those challenges. I mean, I look back now and as horrible as a lot of those moments are, and, you know, there's still some stuff that impacts me to this day, I really learned a lot and it helped me become stronger and become an adult where I'm able to to be a good person and share my story with other people that, you know what, I went through this, but I didn't let it define who I am. And to all the students out there, the kids that are going through this right now, because unfortunately now we have cyberbullying, which is a whole different animal because it's not just in person. It's these kids that are attacking other kids on social media, not even just kids. I mean, you see it 
Oscar and I could probably talk about this, people that troll on social media and that, you know, say really mean things to people without thinking about how it makes other people feel. And it goes back to one of my favorite Disney movies as a kid, Bambi, growing up. And Thumper's mother said to the rabbit, you know, if you can't say something nice, don't say something at all. And so I, I really try to encourage people to do that. And I know it's not easy at times, especially because sometimes the negativity can really get to you. But if you keep a positive attitude and you know that, you know, you're going, you want to be your best self, that's, uh, that's what you have to really hold on to. And also uh, tell other people it's okay. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that's one of the things that I really admire about you, the ability to just take uh, these negative comments with, with grace, because other people would just totally call out the trolls by swearing and, you know, trying to pick a battle with them. How do you deal with these trolls? And sometimes just viewers. <laughs> It's, it's a struggle every day. And since I broadcast nationally, it's not just one area. I mean, it's from all over the country. I know there's different traditions and different things that happen in different parts of the country. So sometimes I have people that might not understand what's going on in my life because it's completely different than their life. And so one of the things that I've learned about trolls is, you know, there, there's some people that it's not even worth your time responding to. It's not even worth your energy because they're obviously going through something really tough or and for them to think that it's OK to talk to you that way or to put you down. You know, you, you just you say some positive vibes for them or a little prayer and you move on. But there are some of those people out there that either are constantly being bullies or constantly trolling or saying very hurtful and untrue things. And sometimes you do have to call them out. And I, I always try to call them out in a way where I'm not trying to become a bully back. I'm not trying to be mean back. I'm trying to say, hey, you know what? That's not true. Or I really don't appreciate that. Or, you know, I, I wish I could give you some more information. I hope you have a really good day. I always try to add something positive to the end of my comments when I talk back to trolls because I feel like maybe that little boost of energy is going to do something for them and sometimes it doesn't. There's other times where they'll actually write back and be like, oh my gosh, Meredith, I'm really sorry. I, I had no idea I was being offensive. So sometimes it can actually be helpful and help other people when you're honest with them as well, but in a nice way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge problem for everybody, especially that's on air because you just open yourself to all these things. So I'm just, I, 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 I just take example of how you do it. Um, luckily, I haven't been impacted like so much by trolling. But then again, I haven't really done uh, a lot of lives, and that's one thing that one of the things that you do that that is outstanding. Like you're really good at social media. You have so many followers. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about. Um, uh, uh, how you got to be so good in social media, and then we'll go into your uh, uh, career as a meteorologist. And uh, we do have a question regarding that. So, um, okay. yeah, for, first off, how did you how did you uh, uh, learn what you know about social media, and and do you have any tips and tricks to bump up your you followers? Me some tips, so I have to give you kudos when I was in Santa Barbara because you did help me out with some of my social media expansion. And I, I am so grateful for that. So I do want to thank you. But what you're seeing here, me and Oscar talking, this is me. And this is me on social media. I am trying to be as honest and open as possible. There's no need to put on a face. There's no need to be somebody I'm not. What you see is what you get. And, you know, if I'm laughing on social media and I'm being positive, that's me. If if I get sad and I post a comment that, you know, I'm having a bad day, does anybody else know what that feels like? I'm trying to be real with you. I want you to understand that I'm just like you. The only difference between me and anybody that's watching this is my job is public. I'm on the news every single day or almost every single day, but I'm just your average friendly neighborhood meteorologist. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think that's so important. I, you know, I think a lot of people, and and I've seen so many examples of this. People see right through you if you're fake or not when you're doing, you know, like Facebook lives, Instagram lives. Uh, I mean, I can name so many examples of 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 that happening. But I think I think you're you just nailed everything that that um, makes somebody really good at social media. You know, be yourself. Uh, and 
be be confident too because you're you're very confident in in what you do and i i know this this kind of stemmed from the earlier days and and the bullying and and um you know it just made you a, <clears throat> a stronger person we were talking about this in part one um uh, of this <clears throat> of this chat but um now you, you're you're on a national stage and and we'll talk let's talk a little bit about your humble beginnings like where where um where was your first job what was your first job and uh what did you learn from that experience well are we talking first job in tv or first job when i was 15 and a half and i needed to make some money so i could have money to go to the mall and buy myself clothes Whoa. <laughs> you know what that's that's a good point let's actually start with that because before we got to where we are today for you and i both we worked crazy jobs but we want to know where you work. What was uh, so? What was what was what? What are some of your crazy jobs that you had to to do before making it on TV? Well, I um, if anyone is watching from the Cleveland area, there's a chain called Marks, and it's like a deep discount store. And when you were 15 and a half in the state of Ohio, you could actually work part time and have a job and a lot of other states you had to wait until you're 16. So I was putting in a few hours a week and I was a cashier and I stocked shelves. And, you know, I did that for a while, but I wanted something I was a little bit more kind of passionate or into. And there was an opening for a beauty advisor at Walgreens. And as you know me now, I haven't changed much from a kid. I love fashion. I love makeup, all that girly stuff. And so I was able to actually work the makeup counter. And what was fun for me was in addition to interacting with people and really getting that sort of customer service skill set built, because we all know how important customer service is. And you really learn a lot about that when you're in a position because you get all types of people that come into your store. But I was actually able to compete for monthly contests, like who could sell the most Walgreens products? And I would actually get commissions back. So it was a fun challenge for me and I really enjoyed it. And I made some good friends along the way. So that was my first, I guess you could say full full-time job. And then when I was in college, I worked for Walgreens for a little bit. And then I was a waitress at a Japanese steakhouse. And I can tell you, I never loved getting free sushi as much as I did when I worked <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, we are able to eat yeah. some of the food. And they were such a great staff. But that was my first really, really tough job. Because if you haven't waitressed or you haven't uh, been a waiter, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And you have to bring your personality into it. So I'm almost thankful for my customer service experience because I was able to bring that into helping provide a service with food. And so, yeah, so those were some of my first jobs. And then, you know, ever since college, I was able to get my first TV job uh, right out of college. I had an internship in college. And so I've, uh, you know, I had some challenges where I was out of TV work for a little bit and I actually had to take three jobs at one point, which, you know, a lot of people look at the story and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, you just go from station to station, you work up in your career. But there was a station I worked for right when I was starting off and I got let go. And I ended up for, I think five or six months, I was working three jobs just so I could pay the bills. And I was a waitress at an Italian restaurant, a very fancy Italian restaurant. And then I also worked at kind of a bar tavern and then I wrote for the local paper. I did stories so I could keep up with my journalism. And it all ended up paying off because then I got my next job in TV, which first full-time uh, gig I like to call is Rapid City, South Dakota. And yeah, being from Cleveland, I was like, oh, Rapid City, I don't know where this is. And they said Mount Rushmore. And I'm like, okay, cool. Where's that? That's <laughs> <laughs> horrible. Uh, and I'm so you, glad I moved on. Yeah. Um, and, and what what – were some of the responsibilities that came with your first on-air job? One of the fun things that I think a lot of people don't realize is when you want to be a meteorologist, it's not all weather all the time. So I was a meteorologist on the weekends. I was a one-woman band reporter, which you and I, Oscar, were joking about it because we had to carry this huge equipment, 50-pound camera on one arm. I had my... <laughs> Right on, on the other, and I'm going yeah. up the ski hill trying to do a score, a story on a special events, a uh, special needs event for kids, and I had to shoot my own video. I had to go back, I had to edit it, and then I had to have it on the broadcast all within like, you know, a six or seven hour period, and this had to include driving to the station, and so I did that, and then I also was a producer because they found out that. I was very ambitious and I wanted to try to learn everything in the newsroom. So if say something happened to one of my teammates and they needed me to assist, 
I knew how to anchor. I knew how to produce. So I ended up doing in my first job everything besides sports in the news department. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, that's that's a lot, and and yeah, that's actually what it happens in, in smaller markets. You know, you have to wear all these different hats. Um, but in the end, your passion was doing weather meteorology. Uh, was has that always been your passion? It has ever since I was three, Oscar. So just think <laughs> little Meredith, big curls, uh, big Coke bottle glasses. And I know there's some people watching right now that are laughing and they remember me running around. I'm meteorologist Meredith Garfalo. <laughs> and I was like six or seven years old, but I was actually three. My mom told me about surviving a tornado outbreak. And so I made my first forecast on what's Facebook Live now back in the day was on what's called a Fisher Price tape recorder. I know Oscar, you had you know what that is. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For all those newer millennials watching, what is it? It's uh what is it? Probably picking up your phone and doing your own for oops, your own forecast. Um <laughs> it's literally like a player and you put a tape in and you hit record and then your voice records through the microphone on this tape. And the tape was probably this big, a cassette tape. So you might go into an antique store now <laughs> or maybe your mom or your grandma's house and you'll see those tapes. But that's what we used to record on. So it wasn't digital. And so um yeah, that was one of my first times. Then I grew up watching the broadcasters in town and I ended up just reading every single tornado book I could take out of the library because my mom survived a tornado outbreak and I really wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to helping people and warning them when bad weather came. Wow. Well, and then and then from that from that job was that the was the next step in Stone Santa Barbara or was there something else in between? So I went from my internship was at WGN in Chicago, which Tom Skilling to this day is still a legend and such a great person I learned from. And then I went to Rapid City. And I went to Sarasota, Florida. I worked there for a few years. And then I came to Santa Barbara. And that's where we met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that I really admired about you was just you're, you're, you're so multi-talented. Not only could you do weather and you're so good. I just got a Fisher Price tape recorder. I don't know if you could see this or not. Let's uh, see if I can try very, it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe oh. if you dim the, the screen, if you can dim the screen oh, yeah. a little bit more. Then we might be. Let's try this. Let's see, because I really want to show the millennials. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> there wow. we go. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. So it was like a microphone yeah. and a beautiful setup. And that's when I made my first weather forecast on. So, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm so terrible at like trying to do that. But <laughs> yeah, that was it. I had one of those. I think it was the cheapest version possible. But my parents knew how much I wanted to do weather. So they got me something I could talk on. And now I talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, and and you know one of the things that that it just makes you I think a, just a very special person is not only are you nice, you're confident, but you're multi-talented. Uh, you uh, sing as well. And the first time I, I think I believe the first time I, I heard you sing was we we're doing a telethon in Santa Barbara, and you stepped that's in. Nice. <laughs> Yes, that's right, the uh, KEYT Unity Telethon, and I was singing right after, oh, uh, was it Peter Noon? Peter Noon sang at that, so I was singing with yeah. Peter Noon and um, Kenny, uh, Kenny Loggins, who was a great supporter of the local charity stuff in Santa Barbara, and so here I am, and they needed someone to sing, and I'm not, I'm not Kenny Loggins, but they're like, do you want to sing a Christmas song? And so I did, and yeah, that was that's right, that was my first Christmas, because I started in November, and so that was my first Christmas with the station. And that's when we really, I started becoming friends with you and your wife and gosh, look at us going back in time. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was a, a special time. Uh, I think because whenever you meet good people and you work with good people, it just makes your job a lot easier and, and a lot more fun. Um, and, and I, I did, I have gotten a chance to just see you, uh, you know, seeing at the this very localized event, and then all of a sudden, last time I last time I remember seeing you was like at uh, clips of you at some big venue singing the national anthem. So how did you how did you talk to me about the, that that uh, that timeline from when you uh, participated in this telethon to all of a sudden singing the Denver Broncos game? 
It's definitely all about networking and connections. And I think you could agree, Oscar. It's like mm -hmm. with our career field, you network, you get to know people and also practice makes perfect. And so the more you practice, the better you become. And yeah. I've actually had no formal singing training. So what you hear is just me given my God given talent out to the world. But I just, you know, I have to admit, I, I sang at a lot of sporting events in colleges, UCSB, for example, and I always dreamed of since a kid to sing at a pro game. And so I, I, I did a couple of takes and I sent it out to some of the other sporting events in town and nobody called me back. And then one day I was just sitting there with my boyfriend, Scott, and I got an email and I said, you're not going to believe this, but they have an opening. They need one singer for one of the pregame, the preseason games, the Broncos versus the Bears. Do you want this opportunity? And I don't, I don't remember how I reacted. I think I was in shock, like, oh my gosh, this is happening. I'm like calling my boss, like, <laughs> I need this day off. I need to get this. And oh my gosh, I mean, it was such a blessing. And it just is a reminder. And something I like to share with people is that hard work pays off. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not on your time schedule. Maybe it's not in the frame that you want things to happen or you want things to happen sooner than later. But when you work really hard, you're passionate about something, you're honest, you're open, and you really just have faith it's going to happen. It eventually will. And I got up there in front of, gosh, I can't remember how many people, I think 50 to 60,000, maybe? Almost 80,000. Okay, almost 80,000. Checking in with Scott. He's in the next room. But almost 80,000 people, the biggest <laughs> crowd I ever sang up before in my life. Wow. Now, that's incredible. Yeah. And, and, and I know that we were talking earlier that I could never <laughs> – do anything like that because it's so easy for the very little, littlest thing to just throw you off and then you know then everything is off after that but but you were able to make this look so easy and so flawless it's just amazing and just it's a testament to the the skills that that you have not only you know on air but how you communicate with people and i mean just from from just just you're a well-rounded person and so and so that's why i was so happy because i know you were you were studying so hard to receive the certification the broadcast uh certification i believe i mean you'll explain a little bit about this but but um i i, I was just so thrilled that that all of your hard work paid off and you got this certification can you just talk a little bit about that and and how you felt when you first got word that you were getting this Gosh, you know, Oscar, some of the biggest accomplishments in my life have come with failure before it. And I think that's a life lesson that sometimes you learn and sometimes you don't. But I definitely have learned it because as many ups as we go through in life, there's also a lot of downs. And to get the American Meteorological Society's a, a CBM or Certified Broadcast Meteorologist, you might see your local meteorologist. They have it's a it's an AMS uh, logo on there or NWA. Those are different types of seals. So I have the AMS and it's one of the highest you can receive. Receive um, from the American Meteorological Society as a broadcast meteorologist. And so I just take a written exam and an on air broadcasting, two clips, one of a busy weather day, one of a quiet weather day that are sent to a panel from the AMS, from seal holders, and they critique you to make sure that you are worthy of the seal. And for me, I'm a hor I'm so, Oscar, I'm so horrible at taking tests. <laughs> I mean, even like those tests online, like A, B, and C, I stress out sometimes. I mean, I just, I have test anxiety and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who know what that's like, but I actually had to take three different tries to get my exam passed, the written exam. I failed the first two times by a little bit, but I was crushed and I was heartbroken and that was my biggest fear with trying to get this. And it took me years. I mean, I thank my boyfriend Scott so much because he finally said, Meredith, you gotta do this. You know, you, you know, this is a huge accomplishment for your career. You've got to do this. And so I studied really hard and but it took notes from the first two times I didn't pass. And the third time I passed, I almost got kicked out of the center. I thought they were going to take my test back from me because I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I passed, I passed. And they're like, you need to leave, ma'am. You cannot be that loud in this testing center. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to leave. Right out to the car. I'm like, ah, oh, uh, And then after I submitted my on air, I had to wait three months. And I think the day that I found out, I found out via email and I had said, I'm going to, I'm going to get down on my, my knees and I'm going to thank the good Lord the day I get my seal. And I was right next to your desk. And I can't remember if you were in the newsroom or not at that time, but I was right next to your desk and I found out and I got right down on my knees and I thanked the Lord. And I was like, you guys, I passed. I got my CV now. Oh my gosh. It was, <laughs> it was such a great moment. You know what? If I didn't, not, if I didn't fail those the first two exams, if I didn't, 
you know, have that struggle or that long time period, I don't think I would have, have, has, have really appreciated it. And I think that goes for a lot of things in our life. You know, sometimes it's going to take extra tries and extra weights and, and, and extra lessons to get what we really, really hope to get out of our life. And then when we get there, you just appreciate it so much more. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And is there uh, a process that, that like requirements that you have to have beforehand before even applying to be a certified uh, broadcast meteorologist? Yes, there's a whole list, but one of the things is you have to actually have your Bachelor of Science in Meteorology. And if you don't, if you have a certificate in Meteorology, you actually have to go back to school and take all the required classes, which is a lot of calculus, three years of calculus, two years of physics, um, differential equations, like it's, it's a very intense full program, but it is a true bachelor of science. And so that's something that I really had to work for. And I'm just very thankful I chose to go into that program because there's, there's easy ways to get your degree. And then there's a way that, you know, you're going through those four years and the rigorous training. And I almost gave up my freshman year because a professor told me that she didn't think I had what it took to, to get my meteorology degree because it was such tough classes. And I was never a superstar in math or science, but going just back to not giving up and always having faith that the struggle is always going to be there and it's going to be tough at times when you get to the top when you just like when you're hiking a mountain you get to the top of that mountain and you've never felt better in your life <laughs> i'm glad you said that because you know one of the ugliest one of the well the ugly side of of not, not just this business uh in the news industry but also really anywhere else um in in anything that that we do in life there's always going to be rejection there's going to be success and there's going to be rejection and probably a ton of more rejection than success so i'm glad that you said that uh because how do you even get out of that rut you know like people if you get rejected once that's a real blow to 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 your self-esteem um uh, have, have do, i mean can you think back of a time when you were just like really knocked down and enough that you thought like, hey, you know, maybe this is not for me. I mean, in college, yes, when I couldn't pass those exams, mm -hmm. but you know, I had some struggles finding a, a new opportunity when I was ready for my next challenge in the TV business. And there were moments where I wouldn't get calls back from news directors for months, or I was given tips by certain talent agents that, well, you know, maybe she needs to lose a little bit of weight or maybe she, you know, needs to get better at this or that. And, you know, there's a point where you try to keep the faith, but you doubt yourself. But looking back, I've learned it's all about the timing and it's about the right opportunity happening at the right time. And I think once you realize that, say your best friend got the job that you wanted, at first you're a little bit like, oh, I really wanted that job. Why did she get it? You know, not me. But when you change your mindset, and it took me some time to do this, but once you change your mindset to, it's not my time, that is that was not meant for me, there's something even better, you're still gonna have those moments of doubt, but you just feel so much better about it because then when somebody else gets an opportunity, you can celebrate it for them because even if you did want it, obviously they deserved it or they needed it more or they, you know, it was meant for them to have it. And so I just love living my life like that now because I get really excited about other people, but then I also look forward to the opportunities that are going to be in front of me that just had to be laid out and fall into place because I didn't get this or that happening in my life. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's um, uh, the, 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 the most satisfying feeling when you get, you know, rejection, 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 but don't you don't give up. And then you get that big, uh, big thing that you want, that that reward. And it always feels so nice, especially when it happens to awesome people. And you're one of those people. Uh, so are you, Oscar. That's oh. one of uh, this thing together. What is it called? A vlog? Uh, yeah, it's, I yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, so I call it the quarantine vlog. Um, it's, you know, that there's with uh, with everything that's going on right now. One thing that hasn't taken a break is this COVID nineteen pandemic. So we're still at home, kind of limiting our movements, even though more places and more places are opening each day. Um, but uh, when you first started, I mean, I've been doing this vlog for I think over, a little bit over two months now. So uh, one of the things. Uh, was that um, the um, what do you call it? Like the the 
the whole aspect of staying at home kind of allowed me to have more time to dedicate to a little bit more creativity. And one of the things I love is creating projects. Um, it, it, it It's become a hobby of mine just to, it's the way that I stay creative. So I, you know, research a little bit about live streaming and then I built the setup and I have a little bit of a, a studio that I've kind of built uh, at home. Um, and, and so it's just, it's it's great that I've been talking to people and, and, and not only catching up and see how they're doing, but they've also bring in or brought in a fresh perspective on, on things and the way they do. And I mean, I talked to a fitness coach and, and a, a life motivator. Uh, and so that was a, that was a very interesting uh, conversation. And it's in the earlier vlogs, which I, I keep everything on my YouTube channel that's just dedicated to this vlog. So people see the live broadcast, which is right now my Facebook page, and then the, the uh, replay on, on YouTube. Um, but w with, um, with you and, and your career uh, as an on-air meteorologist, we do have a, a couple questions here that, that I want to uh, get to. And they're actually from Claire. <laughs> oh, so, well, hello, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> so first, Claire is asking, uh, if someone wants to be in broadcast meteorology, what is your advice? I'm so glad you asked that because I do a lot of school talks and college career talks. And I think sometimes people think that when you're younger, you might not know what you want to do, or you might know what you want to do, but it's such a long time away. You don't think that it's possible. And whether you're, I mean, you're probably not three watching this, like, that. <laughs> but if you're a child watching this, you know, if you're a high school student and you're watching this and thinking, you know, this is a really cool field. Believe in yourself, number one. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do what you want to do just because they think that you don't have the grades or you don't have the personality. If you fully believe that that's what you want for your career path, go for it. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be extremely challenging at times. You are going to want to give up, but you really need to believe in yourself, keep that confidence, and also surround yourself with good people your friends, your family, your professors, your teachers that are building you up. And also reach out to people in the field that you're interested in. I mean, we can put my my social media or my email address on here and anybody that's interested in broadcast meteorology, I'd love to have a conversation. I'd love to be there for you because when I was young and I was dreaming of being a meteorologist, I talked to people in the business and I am so thankful for those people, my mentors, because I wouldn't be here today had I not reached out to them. So don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, and then we do have also a, a message. Well, it's, it's rather a comment from uh, Steve Rogue, which uh, hopefully you can see there on your display. Uh, but it says, um, paying your dues at Rapid City. They have wild weather. That was in reference oh to gosh, what we were talking I about earlier. <laughs> I mean, seriously, they're under a risk for severe storms today. It's forecasting nationally, it's nice because I know when stuff's happening like all over the country. But mm -hmm. if there's nothing in Colorado, for example, here, I have no idea. People ask me, Meredith, what's the Denver weather? Um, I can tell you where the tornado outbreak could be. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. But I'm also very thankful for that because I had a fantastic chief meteorologist, Mike Modric, who to this day I still talk to, who helped teach me and coach me on that stuff. But I learned to do so many different types of weather there. And the hours were a little... Um, or a little better because I wasn't getting up at 12.30 a.m. like I did this morning because I do for my job. And so, um, yeah, it's it's crazy. But I'm very thankful for every community that's let me into their community to become a part of it, even if it's for a year, even if it's for three and a half years. I'm just so thankful because being a broadcast meteorologist is a privilege. And I get the opportunity not only to, to help people with forecasting, but also to motivate people and to share my story and to be real and honest and hopefully help people to become their best self and to be somebody they can look up to. And I'll be the first to admit I'm not perfect. I make so many mistakes still every single day, but I hope that I can share my story to help others. And I hope I can encourage others and motivate others to do whatever they want to do because you know, we get one life to live and we have that opportunity to make it the best we can, but also to be good to other people, to be kind, to help out, to, to be a listening ear or to be a positive voice. And you know, with everything that's going on right now, it's been very, very tough times, but we can only be the best we can be for other people when we're being the best to ourselves. Hmm. 
Well said. Well said. And that's why Lyle Pope says, you rock, Meredith. <laughs> oh, thanks, Lyle. You rock, too, for joining this broadcast. Um, oh, and I don't know how long is this on you, am I? <laughs> No, 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 no. This is this is great. Uh, and and the next question uh, again comes from Claire. She says, you know, also weather people present the weather without a script. How do you compose your weather cast with nothing to read from? So much talent. Gosh, practice makes perfect, Claire. I mean, I've I have so much knowledge, and sometimes I think I, I say way too much because I don't have a script to keep me on track. But it's just going in there, finding out what the weather story is, and then telling the weather story. And I'll throw some scientific lessons in there from time to time and throw a little bit of what I know, but in a way that people can understand it. I want a child to watch me on the news and understand what my forecast is, even if they don't understand all the, the, the dynamics or the science behind it, but also be able to tell an adult and explain to them something. So when they go outside, they're like, oh, that's a cirrus cloud, or hey, that looks like a front coming through. You know, Meredith taught us about that, or when we were talking about a tornado watch versus the warning, this is what it means, but in a way everybody can understand, because I understand science can be very complicated, but it's still fun to share science and, and inspire STEM careers with what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, uh, I mean, one of the things about the different careers that we take, because this is not just simply a job. I mean, this is a career, so it requires a, a certain path. And and uh, your your I, I love the timeline uh, of your successes because it's a great example of you know again if you follow uh, your dreams and you're really passionate about those, then uh, you know the sky's the limit. You know, you you went from interning to being uh, on the national stage. That's um, that's a, an awesome accomplishment. I think everybody can can use it as an example on their own uh, for their own uh, you know, life events. Uh, but before we wrap this up, Meredith, is there anything that, that you'd like to uh, say or add or talk about that we didn't talk about uh, during this this uh, conversation or even during part one <laughs> before the power went out? Well, that's, you should go back and watch part one because Oscar and I had some very fun and funny moments there. But I think, you know, what's great is that people we meet in our life, you'll, you'll still run into them down the road. I mean, I haven't seen you and Claire for, gosh, I believe it's been three years now. I mean, we've talked on social media, but I haven't seen you. And it's incredible that the people that you meet in your life, some stay for a long time, some come and go, some you want to get out of your life because it was a bad experience, but it's all, I'm not trying to be cliche, it's all part of the circle of life. I mean, it's, I think it's just incredible that they, when people say it's a small world, it really is because I have had viewers in Rapid City that I run into in Denver, or I'll hear from somebody in Santa Barbara that, oh my gosh, I was at the um, Hastings airport and I turned on and saw you doing the weather. And that's why you have to be so kind and good to other people. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to get along with you, but you want to leave a person's life better than when you came into it. And whether it's a positive word or an uplifting message, or maybe you did something nice for them, it's so much better when you can leave the world better than you found it. And so that's something I, I try to do every day. And I know you do too, Oscar, and you've come a long way as well. You and Claire, I mean, I remember when we first met, and we were all working in, in Santa Barbara. And, and now just to see how you both have really just, it, I'm at a loss of words because I'm so proud of you guys. And you feel awesome. And you, you oh, guys have done you. such a good job. And I'm so blessed that we can still stay in touch and also do things like this to, to hopefully help motivate others and give them, some, give them some rays of light during what has been, I'm sure, for many a tough time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, well, I, I appreciate uh, those words. I, I really do love what I'm doing, and, and I'm, I'm glad that I get a chance to do it. Um, uh, and uh, if we ever down the line work together again, that's going to be like just the best time because I love surrounding myself with good people. Uh, they, they just make the job so much fun. Uh, it's, it's almost... Uh, uh, crazy to, to think that it's, it doesn't really feel like a job when you are surrounded by these types of folks. 
Um, now, the one last thing, uh, and I hope you're okay with it. I didn't, I didn't bring it up to you because I, I kind of wanted to leave it fresh. But you know, it's nothing bad or anything. I want to play just a little game called like, "What is your favorite?" Um, and <laughs> it's almost like a rapid fire question type game. Uh, so I'll just ask you a series of questions just so people can get a little to know you a little bit more. Um, and um, uh, after that, we'll just call it a day. But are you ready? <laughs> Ta -da! I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, so so I have uh, several questions here, and you don't have to think too much about this. Let's start out with a simple one. What's your favorite color? Blue. <laughs> okay. Favorite ice cream. <laughs> you said not on fire, so I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Favorite ice cream flavor. Chocolate peanut butter. Favorite song. Ooh, song to sing or song to listen to? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, you know what? Let's do both. A good song to sing and a good song to, to listen to. Gosh, that's a really tough one, actually. Um, a good song to listen to. I mean, it takes me back to my Santa Barbara days. Pharrell's Happy. That just always puts me in a really good mood when I hear that yes. song. Or Uptown Funk, because you can ask my boyfriend, anyone that knows me, I am jamming in the car and I'm singing. Like, I love Uptown Funk. I can rock out of the stoplight like nobody else to that song. Um, but as far as a song to sing, um, you know, I, I really like that song, I Hope You Dance by Leanne Womack, mm. because it's such a positive, uplifting song. and. I just, I really love singing it every time because I, I feel like people just really smile and get positive whenever I sing that song. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Longer um, answer, but again, I'm scripted, so you gotta yeah. get the long answer. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. What is the f your favorite article of clothing to wear? Dresses. And accessory. I'm sorry. Okay, glasses? Uh, dresses. Dresses oh. for that. Her favorite accessory is a hat. Well, okay. I didn't know that. I just got a reminder. Hat, hat or shoes, hat or heels. H or H, hat or heels. Win, win. Yeah. Uh, favorite quote? Um, it's, it's from uh, A League of Their Own. Um, I'm trying to remember it, but I should know it. Um, is that the There's No Crying in Baseball one? <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, that's a good quote, too. But it's about the hard that makes it great. Mm. Like, they're talking and something. I, I wish I could remember now. I should I should Google it. But it's like, um, it's it, nobody ever said it's not going to be easy, you know, or something like that. But it's the mm -hmm. hard that makes it great. If you all Google that quote, you'd find it. But I love that quote. Mm. That sounds really nice. And it... Uh... I love that. I mean, you know, I actually, that. Yeah, while you're putting yeah. the next question, I'm going to look it up yeah. because I'm going to be so upset with myself. <laughs> you know, you're kind of like me. Like if I if if I uh, don't if, if I'm just left wondering what the true answer is to something that I have, I just can't. I, I, I feel so restless. Uh, I can't. Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. It is. Da -da -da. It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. The hard is what makes it great. I was close. I love that. <laughs> uh, I just love that. Well, having said that, what is your favorite movie or TV show? I love Dirty Dancing. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And favorite TV show, The Office. I cannot tell you how yes. many times I have rewatched The Office. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I could quote it. And my boyfriend's like in the other room laughing right now at me because literally if we go to a trivia, which we still need to find one that works with my sleep schedule, I think I would kick some butt in office trivia. Michael Scott would even be like, what's up, Meredith? <laughs> what's your favorite Michael Scott quote? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, so many there are so many good ones. I mean, but that one, I laugh every time in the show when he says, you just can't help but crack up. So, I and I still, uh, still say it in all the time. It's so bad. Uh, yeah, I especially love the, the how he says it in the most serious situations with a serious face. Like he just, he knows he's yeah. discussing a serious matter, but he just can't pass up the opportunity to say it. <laughs> 
uh, or, or, or like Jim when he pretended to uh, to be uh, Dwight and says he pisses off White uh, by saying Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. That was Jim. Yep, that was that was Jim and um, Jim Halpert and Dwight when they're sitting there and they dress up like each other. That's one of our favorite episodes too. But yeah, he's like, "What kind of bear is that? False black bear? Question." Bears eat beets or something. I mean, I oh, think we're pretty man. close. Uh, it's sick. Isn't it sick? I, I, I love yeah. it. I'm sure a lot of people out there that are obsessed about shows as much as I am about their favorite shows. So. I know I'm not alone. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's an awesome show. I rewatch it all the time. Uh, well, what is your favorite season? Since you report on weather, what is your favorite season? I just love fall. Mm. Warm apple cider by a campfire, going up to the mountains yeah. with friends. Even if you're not, I don't, I don't ski or snowboard, but I just like being up in the mountains and just having, even when I lived in Florida, like those cool fall days, there's just something just so crisp and comfy and you can wear a sweater and snuggle up on a blanket and it's all right. <laughs> yeah, are, <laughs> are you a Mac or PC girl? I am a PC. Don't judge. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I use. That's what I'm using right now. Uh, I just like the that you can customize it any way you want to. I mean, I have a custom made PC that I'm using, and it's awesome. <laughs> Mine's very generic, but hey, good. I'm glad for you, Oscar. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't be able to do this right if you didn't have it custom made. So. Oh well, and you know, we talked a little bit about how great you are at social media. So, what is your favorite Instagram feature? Hmm, that's a really good question. I wouldn't have thought that one. Um, let's see. I think I kind of like the, the the video when you can ask questions or have people like comment on polls because it's kind of fun. You just get conversation going. And if it's been a really bad day or something, I could put something silly on there. Like the one time my co-anchor and I, we put this video up and it was like your favorite 90s snack, like Dunkaroos. They were amazing. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't remembered our, our, our gobstoppers or fruit gushers or fruit by the foot. I mean, some of these snacks as a kid are now like historic. But for us 90s kids, we were like, these are really good. So we put it up and people were throwing stuff out there that we haven't thought about in decades. It was so much fun. <laughs> um, well, what's your favorite animal? I love dogs, but I think I still I still love tigers. Ever since I was a kid, I love the love tigers. I don't know why, but dog, I'm, I'm a huge dog fan. Love dogs, especially poodles and doodles. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite theme park to visit? Cedar Point. Ooh, okay, all right. Uh, I like I love everything that has cedar in it. One of my favorite spots in New Hampshire that I've gone to was Cedar Pond, which is not far from where my mother-in-law lives, and that was a great. <laughs> if you like roller coaster, Cedar Point is the bomb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh, okay. What is your number one pet peeve? Oh my gosh. Um, I think maybe it's because I've I've been a journalist too. Is when you don't like check over your social media posts, and I've done. I will admit, I'm the first one where I might spell a word wrong or stuff. But when there's something that's so blatantly honest or, or blatantly out there and you can tell somebody didn't reread something because it's just important, you know, this is going to be out there forever. And I just see people post some stuff and I, I just get, I don't know, it just bothers me because I want to go in and correct it. But I think it's just all these years as a journalist and having to read my scripts and correct them and spell check and do all that stuff. So I just, it kind of bothers me, but I know it's kind of a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, um, <laughs> I've gotten so so uh, used to writing, uh, doing it all these years that I, I mean I I don't even use spell check. Just the other day I actually used to spell check and there was no misspellings, which was which was crazy. Wow, that's an awesome. <laughs> yeah. But then when they when when there are misspellings from somebody else, uh, and I've learned to do this because I, I I know it's it's 
probably not polite to start correcting people, even if you're right on the spelling of certain things. But like canceled is a word that it's like, well, is it two L's or one L or or uh, uh, oh, well, just recently. Yes. Yes, exactly. One, <laughs> one L, one L. Um, but um, yeah, you know, I just I just kind of have to to just take, take a step back and say, okay, you know what? I only be in control of, of what I do. Uh, like if it's blatant, like a really blatant error, like maybe point it out. But you know, if it, especially if it's a stranger, it's like, well, I mean, it, it, in today's world, it's not hard to just Google the word and see if it's misspelled correct or, or spelled correctly. Um, <laughs> but lastly, what is a fun fact about you that people may not know? This goes along with my singing, and I don't know where it came from. Maybe it was because my grandfather had his own accordion band, and I just have music in my family. But I can listen to a song and either sing it back or have the same tune, even if it's the first time that I've heard it. Wow. It's the weirdest thing. Like, I can hear the first the first chorus on the radio, and by the second time the chorus comes around, I can sing it back or I know the tune or I can learn a song very fast. Wow. Man, that's incredible. <laughs> Not a lot of I people know so can do that. that wow. <laughs> oh, Claire, Claire just posted a message. Uh, I think this one's directed to me. I'll bring it up on the screen. She says, grammar, please. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Somebody's got to help out, right? So we're trying to do our best. <laughs> yeah, she. sometimes she gives me a hard time, but... No, she's awesome. I mean, if anybody knows Claire, you'll know that she's like the nicest person yeah. ever. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, <laughs> well, Meredith, thank you so much for just taking time today. I know with the the power outage that happened, and uh, just, I mean, it's it's been like two hours since we started this. So I, I really want to thank you just for taking some time and. And, and and sitting down with me and just having a chat, a good old chat. <laughs> well, I'm going to be a very good girlfriend. I'm going to actually, I would say cook, but I would be lying. I'm going to heat up my boyfriend some really good leftovers that he made for us the other day as a thank you for his patience with letting me do this. So uh, kudos to Scott. I don't, you know, Scott uh, is uh, a great cook, and I I miss I miss that those burgers he he made. What did he call them? The cowboy burger. Yes. Cuban Cowboy, Cuban Cowboy. He was a finalist, top 10 burgers in America for Budweiser's Amateur Cook-Off. So you should definitely go on my page or connect with Oscar and I. We'll show you some of Scott's food because on Instagram, it's amazing. Oh, so good. I couldn't even compare to his cooking. That, that guy needs his own cooking show. <laughs> well, and, and uh, uh, so where, where can people find you on social media? What's your uh, handle? on these platforms? So it's pretty easy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's at my last name, Garofalo, and then WX. So mm -hmm. the last name there, and then just add W and X to that for weather. And you can find me on, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Meredith, thank you again. Uh, stick around for just a couple minutes um, while I close this. And then and then um, I, I know Claire wants to say hi. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. And for everybody that tuned in to watch this, uh, well, part one, I do apologize for the, the, the power outage. It just it suddenly happened. And uh, I'm glad that we were able to recover fast enough to bring you this part two of uh, our sit down chat with uh, uh, Meredith Garfalo, uh, certified broadcast meteorologist. Um, and uh, I, I do appreciate your support. So thanks for um, watching the replay as well. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're watching the replay or if you're watching it after we it's, it's, you know, finish the live here on my Facebook page, Facebook page then um, awesome as well. Thank you for all your comments and your questions. And, and until next time, uh, stay safe, take care, and uh, be sure to get some fresh air. It's actually not a bad day today. So um, uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs>